obviously our, our, we got a, a, a little shift in going into conference play now this week. It'll be uh, uh, just different playing one of the best teams in the country. Uh, you know, they have athletes across the board at every position, uh, top ranked, you know, four or five star players, uh, very, very talented football team. So, uh, for our guys, great challenge, you know, expect a, a great home crowd, home field advantage as, as you, you hope to get usually in, in SEC games and uh, should be a great environment, uh, exciting time. So, um, fired up, ready to go play. I've got a lot of practice work to do in front of us, but we'll be ready to play Saturday. Question? Coach, obviously you, you guys saw a lot in Kyle and Gil when you were recruiting him, but how was he kind of changed his game, so to speak, and, and been able to adjust to the college level compared to what he was in high school? Well, I, I think, you know, I think he, he's just learning a lot with the blocking schemes, obviously. You know, I mean, they, 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 he was well coached in high school, but, uh, uh, you know, a little bit different. He, he was kind of the, the, the feature. They were going to make sure he got the ball a whole bunch. Uh, now he's got to be a, a, an all-around player. And so um, the great thing for a young guy, I think, he, you know, he, he understands that. I mean, he figured it out pretty early that if he, you know, missed fast correction, you're going you're to you're get taken out, you're going to lose your reps, you know. And so um, I think that message that got sent to him uh, early helped him learn to mature about having to work to be an all-around player. I think he's only the second true freshman running back that you played. I think uh, Schumper was the other one. Okay. What was it that you just saw in him that, that allowed him to accelerate his game to play so early? Uh, you know, I don't. He, one, I think he's got a lot of talent. Um, but two, you know, he, he handled the situation well and came in and competed and earned the right to get on the field. Um, you know, and, and a lot of that, and it just goes to the depth and where we're at. You know, I mean, from, from year to year, I think Vic Ballard played right away. He never redshirted for us. Um, and Ladarius Perkins came in with three senior tailbacks in front of him. wasn't going to play a whole lot. But So I don't know if, if it's just him or, but you know, a lot of the playing has to do not just with yourself, which he's done a great job preparing himself with other people. Coach, uh, the Matt Canada offense at, at, at LSU, have you seen a lot of differences? It, it appears they're still really a power running team. What, what have you seen from Well, that? yeah. You know, I mean, they uh, – <clears throat> He's built on running football, you know, and obviously they got some fantastic running backs. They got a good offensive line, um, you know, but they are, you know, they, it starts with the run game for them, you know, the ability to, to, to run, and you know they're doing a great job scheming you of, of motions, uh, shifts, unbalanced movements, trades, all of those things to try to gain the numbers advantage to be able to run the football, and uh, you know, and that's what set, and then they set up the pass game off the run. I know you said Saturday that you guys might uh, do some checking on appeal for Dantzler and his suspension. Did you guys get to do that? We'll, we'll can we I don't think you can. Thing. So there, there's no appeal that can be done. I mean, like, the, the officials made their call, and that was their call. Is there an update on Darrell Williams and his shoulder? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he he could have gone back in the game Saturday uh, with our trainers, and he was you know he was sore like I said during the week, but. Uh, you know, he, he, they, you know, our trainer declared him to go back in the game Saturday, and at that point we were we were playing well and just decided to, to you know, let him get get healthier. Yeah, and what did you think of the final story? How did you look on film afterward? Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought it did well. I thought our offensive line as a whole played played pretty solid uh, during the game, and and you know, part of it is you know there's some some good things. First two games we've been able to to get some guys in there. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, they, you know, fortunately, not, if we can try to stay healthy and we can control the rotation on the offensive line, I think that'll really help those guys grow uh, throughout the year. And then, have you guys made a decision yet to pull Malik here? No, uh, I know he really wants to play this week. Uh, he's he's on the edge this week, you know. So, um, <clears throat> talking to the trainers, we might he might practice some and uh, and have a limited role. Uh, in this game this week for us, and uh, um, just see how he does. You know, I mean, it's it's up in the air. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't gone full practice yet, but he might practice this week. Is that your follow up? Is it practice? That was exactly my follow up. Thank you. I saw you leaning out. I figured I'd get that in. I appreciate it. <laughs> Everybody, you know, saw the, the spectacular things Simmons did in the game on Saturday, yeah. you know, blocking the punt, you know, the touchdowns, all that stuff. 
you know, play to play, you know, 40, 50 snaps a game, is he where you want to be and what makes him kind of dominant in the middle of the game? Uh, he's, you know what, he, he's really getting there, and I, I, that's what I, I'm excited about. You know, I mean, this is, being a second-year player, uh, had success last year, you know, had some success, got, I mean, got an accolade or two last year. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I've really seen him take up the game into – trying to do, be, be a much better fundamental player every single snap instead of, you know, obviously he's a, he's a gifted athlete. You can see that some of the special plays that he makes. But he's really worked hard in understanding the fundamentals in, of the game and, and being where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there, how he's supposed to be there, and, and do every little detail properly. Coach, uh, Nick began the game two for eight and then ends the game ten for his next ten. Yeah. What you guys do to kind of get him in the room with him? <laughs> I don't know, I'm <laughs> My, my great mo coach of motivation on the sidelines is a pretty pathetic first quarter right there, wasn't it? I'm like, that was awful. I mean, you know, but the, when you have guys play a little bit, you look, I'm like, you know, uh, you know, you coach through some of the things, you know what I mean? Uh, comes off and, and, you know, throws the interception while you're coaching through that play. Um, you know, then we completed a couple passes here and there, and then you look and say, boy, you know, it wasn't wasn't very good, but at that point he's kind of a little bit more relaxed and, and he'll laugh it off and, you know, be like, yeah, that wasn't very good at all. Um, but it keeps him calm and, and understanding what's going on. So, you know, I mean, it, it's the, you manage the personality um, at the right time and then make sure you're coaching at the right time just to keep his head head screwed on straight. You got the things you need to teach, teach, and then motivationally and, and you know, confidence-wise, you got to build that up different ways and, and uh, you know, we've, there's not one perfect way to do it, but you're always trying to build confidence in those guys. Of and, and part of it can be laughing off how bad you did, you know, um, to start the game off. And because at that point, he I mean he knows, you know, so he, he knows. So I, I learned that as a young coach, you know, how to you try to deal with those guys and, and make sure you're constructively building them up. Coach, obviously with, with Gary playing more outside this year, just talk about that move for him. And, and way he's been more productive this year with that move? Well, I think it is. You know, if you look at his, his, his body type, it really fits his body type well. You know, he's got length, he's got size, he's got some athleticism, and, and uh, you know, and, and does make him tough because he's got the, the size and instincts being an outside backer, the physicality to be able to hang in there on the run, but the, uh, the athleticism to, uh, you know, to disrupt the, the pass game some um, is it, a big help. So it's... Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him because you see him playing at a much higher level now. You made the move on the extra points to go with Christman. How do you feel about him? And was it what day? Was it just low trajectory or? Yeah, I mean, as I talked to Tucker, I said, hey, you know, well, we got we got to score the points in the game. And you know, my whole deal to Tucker is, you know, you saw me came back in and kicked off, kicked the ball right out of the end zone. I said, I need to see the Tucker I see at practice consistently in games. You know, but um, I, and the confidence that he has in practice, and even when he was competing in practice and put him in pressure situations in practice, he had, a, he had kind of a swagger confidence to him. And, uh, <clears throat> so it's it's not that he can't do it. Um, you know, it's him having the confidence to go out there and do it. So he kicked a great field goal early in the game. We put him in even after made the switch in PATs. He goes out and kicks off. They kind of had the funky one where we were still in a TV timeout, but the official handed the ball and said okay, and he. Missed one, <laughs> but he, but he's telling me as he was running the ball, the officials like, whoa, whoa, stop, stop! And so he's like, I'm like, what happened? And like, he's like, he was yelling at me to stop right when I'm about to kick the ball, um, but he came back at a second kick and kicks it right out of the back of the end zone. So he, um, uh, we're going to continue to work on him. I mean, that's not permanent, obviously. And I, I was excited, uh, um, you know, Jace had the opportunity to come in and, and took advantage of it, and. Um, you know, so we'll we'll see how those guys keep going to practice this week. So you guys expect to go back today on those? PSGs we'll or? see. I want to see a practice this week. You know what I mean? It's um, I, I don't know in a game anybody's done enough to just say they're the guy. You know what I mean? So we got to just see how practice goes and, and then how that translates into Saturday. You know, they're both. You're talking about all. A true freshman, a redshirt freshman, you know, and then, I mean, we could go to, to, to Lawless coming in, but who's, a, you know, I mean, be a first-year player, just got here. Uh, as another guy, he's done really good at practice, you know, with the possibility of redshirting him because he hasn't played yet. And, um, 
So, you know, it, all of that's still on the table. When, when Nick drops back to pass, do you think his receivers are getting enough separation? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't, you know. <laughs> they run a really good route, they do. If they don't run a good route, they don't sometimes. But, uh, yeah, there, there's there's guys. It's all depend. You know, I mean, to me it is that a lot of it comes, you know, what I've seen with him um, is that slight, you know, the slight, Heels. I, I don't see him making a lot of bad. The interception was a bad throw. I, I don't see a lot of bad throws out of him. I see, you know, we're just slightly off here. You know, I mean, you know, it, 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 tough ball to catch, take a little bit off that throw. Just little things that will help uh, improve his completion percentage. And you saw that, I think, after the first quarter of the game the other night. You know, he kind of settled in and started making more plays. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of that's just just on him making sure he's making all the right decisions. You mentioned LSU showed a lot of motions and shifts and things like that in their first couple of games. How do you react to that defensively, especially since they seem to have gotten good at snapping the ball pretty quickly once they make that shift? Well, I mean, that's part of their offense, you know what I mean, of what they do. So you just, you know, I mean, we, we got to practice it this week, you know. A very different offense. It would be the, the third completely different offense we've seen in three weeks. You know, to go from, from the wishbone to a team we had to prepare for possible like real up-tempo offense. Uh, I think how the game went, we were able to control the tempo of the game Saturday night, not let, you know, Louisiana Tech get into their super fast tempo offense. You know, so, you know, this week we got we got a week to practice it, you know, of, of adjusting and getting lined up to all the shifts and motions and trades that they do and, then, and being ready to go when the ball was snapped. Coach, uh, Ed's been a head coach in this league before, and mm -hmm. now he's back home at LSU. Just what, what do you see out of Ed and his coaching style? Has he matured during his journey, or what do you see? Um, I don't know. Uh, mature is a, a different word, you know. I don't. Depends, you know. I mean, we're all mature and immature. I guess it depends when you come see me. You come out of my boat with me in the summertime. I might think, boy, he's hasn't matured much as a coach, right there. Is out there surfing, having a good time. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think I think you know, Fred. I, I think Ed is uh, uh, has had the opportunity to be a head coach. When you you, you know, he had the opportunity to be a head coach. Uh, I'm sure he learned a lot from it. Uh, didn't get the opportunity to. Do it. I've been very fortunate here. I've made I've made a lot of mistakes as a head coach, I've, and I've been able to remain being a head coach to learn from a lot of those mistakes. Um, you know, not everybody in today's world gets that opportunity. Um, and, you know, so you're, you're hoping you get a second chance, which, which he did. And he did. you see what he did at USC when he got that second opportunity to be a head coach and what he's learned to do and, um, you know, how to handle a program. And, and so, uh, you know, I know he, he's a great motivator, uh, you know, like Ed a lot. You, you can tell uh, even when he was, even as an assistant, a lot of times, you know, whether, you know, being a defensive line coach, but he's, you know, a lot of times he's defensive line assistant head coach because of his personality, style, motivation, relationship with the players. Uh, he's that type of guy that guys, guys want to be around, they enjoy playing for. And, um, you know, and, and that's, what's, that's what has made him successful uh, as a head coach at both stops, and you know, or, or now it's his third stop being here at, at LSU, really as head coach. And I'm sure he's learned and grown from some of the mistakes he's made um, to really focus on, you know, the qualities he has that makes him a good head coach, which is guys loving to play for him, motivating, um, you know, and, 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 and that part of it, and then fix the other issues. When you get to the SEC opener every year, do you expect a different intensity or focus of practice, or does it all does it just happen naturally and organically? Oh, it happens. You know, I mean, it's everything's different. You know, I'm not talking about guys. I mean, if, if they need me to motivate them, they got problems. You know, what I mean, they're they're messed up if they need me to motivate them for a game like this. Um, you know, I mean, they I don't, they don't need a big rallying cry this week, or you know, let's try to. Push a button here or there. This is the SEC or home opener, as uh, our home SEC opener against a, a top ten team or wherever they rank. I think they're a top ten team, but the uh, you watch them play. But it, it's our guys beat. They they know it's different, and the, you just get feel the intensity picks up a little bit different. Everybody, you know, 
I did. I went for my run this morning. I was going. I ran faster this morning than I normally do. It's, you know, you just it's just something a little different. Coach, <laughs> what kind of difference did Jonathan Abram make in the game? Well, I think I think it, a lot is good, and you know, one of the reasons, uh, it, uh, really, in, in talking and in the decision of, of he didn't play a whole lot, not being probably, you know, he was cleared to play, played, I played about three or four plays the first game, coming off being a little banged up, uh, was you know we're going to have to play a lot of nickel and dime and play with more DBs, and uh, so. <clears throat> You know, making sure he was healthy and ready to go in, in game two was, was really important. And, and it was, you know, we were able to, to create advantageous matchups for us out there on the field, uh, you know, with, with keeping the ath certain athletes out there and, and more DBs out there, and that certainly helped. In, in those dimes, looks, it looked like uh, Mark McLaurin was particularly up in the box a lot, providing a physical presence. Him and Abram, too, do they kind of combine for that? physical presence in that dime look? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to just schematically with that because they're really, they're, they're both, they're kind of, with what we're doing, they're, they're essentially playing linebacker, um, you know, against the run. So their run fits, you know, they are a little bit different than where they normally are at safety and how they're, they're filling the plays. Do you think this team is more equipped for RPO stuff than last year's group as far as personnel goes offensively? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I just think they're a little bit more mature group this year, the players. You know what I mean? And, and uh, uh, you look at the, the back end, uh, a little bit more maturity. A, a guy like a Jonathan Abram that actually brings a lot of, of good leadership. But, you know, Mark McLaurin and Brandon Brown are, are, are a year older. Our corners, you know, not to Lando Cleveland's back, that again adds more maturity and leadership to them. Um, you know, and I think, um, you know, Todd's done a good job of getting them in the, the right position of where they need. So I think that helps. I meant offensively. Oh, offensively? offensively? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe we're coaching it better. Um, and I think if anything, the quarterback position, having a little bit more experience, helps you see things. You know, the quarterback position is a lot about processing of information. How fast, you know, and when I say that, it's, you know, people get caught up as, boy, is he an intelligent quarterback? How smart is he as a quarterback? <clears throat> That's not as important. You know, being smart, it helps. It, it's good. It means, you know, I can do a lot more. But to me, it's about the processing of information. How fast information goes from your eyes to your brain and then from your brain to your legs or your arms, whatever one we're going to ask you to do. The faster, when you're RPO, I mean, you're making really fast decisions. I'm asking you, ball snapped in about 1.2 seconds to make a decision between one of three things and a reaction on, on, off the reaction of what the defense does. And... Um, that takes practice and that takes experience and that takes time because there's some that are easy and then there's some that are harder but you know the problem is is when you you're not a veteran guy the easy ones are hard and the hard ones are really hard and when you have that experience I think it helps an awful lot more of of your decision making because the biggest key to me and the biggest question in quarterbacks and decision making is why you know if you ever ask a quarterback I want to know what's going on. I say, well, why'd you do that? And if they say, well, what should I have done? It's really simple. I'm, I'm standing on the sideline. I got headphones on. No one's coming to hit me. You know, if they do, I jump out of the way. I'm not. I'm not looking for a lot of violent contact usually. You know, I'll get fired up sometimes, but you know, I get in trouble if I go out there and try to whack anybody. Um, <laughs> and I'd probably embarrass myself uh, being a little older. The, uh, um, but. Uh, you know, the why, because they're the one that has to make the decision. I want to know what they see, why they did what they did, and are they reading things the right way? When they do, they start making better decisions, and that's going to make you more efficient, especially often, especially with, with RPOs, which are all decision-making, processing of information plays. I don't know if you saw it earlier today. LSU said Arden Key is cleared to play, and yeah. this game had to play. What do you remember of him, and well, what's the plan for, for slowing him down? I mean, I, we, you know, for us, I mean, coming into the game, I've assumed he'd play in our game the whole time. You know, it kind of just seemed like it was, he, he was setting up to come play in our game uh, through their first couple games where they were resting him for our game. So, uh, he's probably one of the most dominant players in the league. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just a, a, a mismatch. Is is you know, has the, the size, speed, physicality to be a, a real strong run stopper, but is... Uh, uh, is just extremely disruptive as a pass rusher and, you know, can change a game. And he, 
he's a guy that, you know, when you scheme up plays, um, you got to really pay attention to because you can scheme up, okay, we're going to block this, you're going to block this guy, you're going to block this guy, and that might not work with him because he can just defeat that block on his own. He can make things happen all by himself.